All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to be playing the Tier 8 Tech Tree Cruiser Cleveland for the Tech Trials series. So here you go, here it is. This is, of course, an American light cruiser. But before we start, I would like to let you know, of course, um, please, if you do want to see a Tech Tree ship like that you're interested in, from like, let's say, Tier 5 to Tier 9, please do let us know in the comments below, and I'll try to get it featured in a potential future video. But anyway, um, so this is the Cleveland. It's a light cruiser, as you can see. Well, well, you can't really see yet, but we can click armor layout, and you'll have 25mm nose armor, 25 side armor, 25 aft, and then 27mm deck armor, and then you, of course, have superstructure and whatever, and then the Citadel looks like this on the Cleveland, but... Honestly, it's not too easy to hit, even though... I, I don't know why. It's like, most of the time, people just get pens or overpens. I don't know. But there's a Citadel on the Cleveland. But yeah, so for my commander build, I'm going to be running this. Lost Stand, Incoming Fire Alert, Priority Target, Consumables Enhancements, Demolition Expert, Adrenaline Rush, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, and Concealment Expert. A different build you could run is you take IFHE and remove whatever you want, really. But IFHE could also be an option on the table if you want. Um, of course, for my modules, I'm running Concealment System Mod 1, Prop Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, Surveillance Radar Mod 1, and Main Armaments Mod 1. And then we're running these for our flags. In terms of the camo, this is the Perma camo. It looks like it's the Azure Lane camo, but I have those turned off. So this is the permanent camo. This is what it looks like. Of course, you have the alternate, which looks like this. I prefer the normal one. We also have this weird one. I don't know what this one is. I don't know why it exists, but it exists. You have this really Americanized one, and then you have a an even more Americanized one. But if you want to see what the Azure Lane one looks like normally, this is what it looks like, another American one. There's a lot of America on the ship, but yeah. So let's go into a game and talk about the ship more. All right, so here we are on Nort. It's a tier 9 game, as you can see, tier 8 and 9, no tier 7s. And it is a carrier game. They do have a Shokaku, so that's a bit annoying for us. Even though we are a light cruiser, and our A should be decent, it's still going to be pretty annoying if he doesn't up torping us, because we have no heals. Um, each, you know, each torp of his does a lot of damage, so it could hurt us quite a lot. So let's play it a bit carefully. Um, of course, we are a radar cruiser, but that doesn't mean we have to force ourselves into uncomfortable positions to get radar off. So let's play it a bit safe at the start, see where the carrier's dropping, and then we can see if we can push or not, depending on if the carrier's on our flank or not, or like, if he shows interest in our flank. So I'm gonna go a bit wider, to be honest, for the start, and we'll see. But yes, this is the Cleveland, as you can see, 40,000 HP, 6.5 second reload, these are 152mm guns, which means you do not pen 32mm um, stock, you need IFAG for that. But you also half your fire chance if you take IFHE. But you pen 30, which is enough to pen most cruisers at tier and above and below. And of course, um, you could also pen battleships a tier under you. But you can't really pen battleship armor plating at tier 8 to 10. You can pen superstructures, of course. That's pretty standard. But you can't pen their hull unless you take IFHE. Then, of course, you can. But we don't have IFHE on this build, as you know, because I've showed you the build. But yes. Um, so our concealment's 9.3, and our radar range is 9, of course. So that's pretty interesting. So, FDG's on the other side. So what are we missing? We're missing a Roma and a North Carolina, which are both here. Which could actually quite, honestly, hurt me quite a fair amount. We're going to have to be careful against those things, especially the North Carolina. Because the North Carolina can overmatch my 27mm deck. Um, Roma can't, of course, but Roma can ev overmatch everywhere else. So we're going to have to be careful against those two, especially the North Carolina. Um, but the Shokaku seems to have shown interest on our other flank, which is nice. So we're, it seems like we're pro potentially going to be able to play the game here, which is nice. Um, there's the Donskoy. Okay. We have to be careful, of course, there might be a submarine on our flank. Um, luckily, Cleveland gets uh, airstrike instead of uh, ship-based ASW, which is nice. Ship base ASW is really bad. Um, yeah, especially on cruisers. But having airstrike is, is nice, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, for sure. And then let's go this way. 
Hmm. Hmm. I just want to see the North Carolina. I don't know where they are. I think I'm gonna. Oh, there's Torps two sets. There's the North Carolina. There's Torps two sets. Kagero's here somewhere. He's not spotting me, so he's not in radar range at all. He could be behind this island, but he's unlikely because the Rupert would hydro him there. Get the salvo onto the Donskoy. And then I think we can start farming this North Carolina if we do get a relight on him. There he is. He's gonna be with his Roma friend, so we're gonna have to be careful while shooting him if possible. I don't know where the Roma is. He hasn't been spotted yet. There he is. Okay, so now we know where he is. Every time I mention the name of a ship, it instantly gets spotted. Our Cossack got killed by a submarine. That's a bit unfortunate. Pretty unfortunate, to be honest. But it is what it is. 4.2k. We need fires. We need fires. Playing against North Carolina is really sketch. Because, like, you know. He overmatches us everywhere. I think I've mentioned it a few times now. Scary stuff, you know. The fact that you, no matter how you angle, you're gonna get smashed, you know? As long as they aim well. But you gotta be careful, you know? If you have prop mod, it helps out in the situation, because you can, like, dance around a bit. Obviously, you're not too fast, you're a Cleveland, you know, the Kleber. But it helps. I'm not sure why my ping is acting up this morning. Oh well, it's okay though. Not too, it's not too game changing. It's mostly consistent. We've spotted an enemy submarine. Like sometimes you can tell there's like a lag spike or something. I don't know what that is. I wish I got a fire though. Fifty two hits, no fire. Fourteen percent. I think I'm gonna go dark here, because these two are gonna bully me. I got a fire though. Hmm. Oh, but he instantly DCP'd. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. It's okay, though. Let's go dark before he shoots again. Roma will shoot again before I go dark. I'm gonna die. Instantly? Nah, nah, I'm okay. I just want to light the fire, man. Wow, dude. Alright, maybe we shouldn't play for fires, guys. We can't get a single one, man. Torpedoes we just deployed. get overmatched for free. Wait, I'm spotted, I'm spotted. This guy's like in our face. Try to do some damage on the Kagero, I guess. The issue is the Narcad's gonna shoot me again. He's aiming at me, as you can see from the one on PT. He's the one aiming at me. Alright, so it's not it's gone. I don't think anyone can finish the Kagero, sadly. We're gonna go for this island on the ten line, the nine line, this one behind me. We want to run away. Because the Narcad will kill me. Kagero can perma spot us, to be honest. I think North Carolina, though, is focused on this, like, 6k HP Tirpids, so we're kind of lucky right now. And Tirpids is healing, so... Oh, but he might shoot me again? Someone's on PT on me. Could be Kagero, could be Roma. It's probably Roma. Okay, Tirpids is torping the North Carolina. Tirpids is, might go broadside toward Roma here. Depends. Might be a bit dangerous. Oh, no. Oh, there's a Kagero though, it's free, you know? 1k HP. Might be free for Tirpids the secondaries to finish him off. I I did get stuck with my propeller, unfortunately. Okay. Mm, the Kagero lived, but the Norkel died. I think I can deal with Aroma, because he doesn't overmatch my deck at least. Like, he'll overmatch my aft, my bow, and my side, but my deck he won't overmatch, which is nice ish. It's better than nothing. Which is, you know, the situation we had against North Carolina. We just have to see it, really and truly. We just have to see it. 
We can just sit here, I guess. Five seconds. Maybe he'll run into us. Not sure what Roma Concealment is. Okay, he's running into us. So, some people ask me, how do you turn off the UI? Control J to turn off the UI. You can change it to whatever key you want, but I mine's Control J, of course. Um, and some people ask, why do you do it? So I can see the shells more clear when they're coming in, because, like, shells are hidden by UI elements. People say they're not, but as you can see, even my shells are hidden by UI elements. So sometimes it's nice to just get a view like this, so you know what's going on, sometimes. Having to fight only one battleship here is much easier than fighting two, to be honest. At the same time, I'm quite happy now. I'm taking this engagement, to be honest. And compared to before. We're not, like, winning, winning the game yet. Oh, actually, the Z46 is suiciding in B, I think, in front of our entire team, right? There's a radar there, too. Okay, we got a permafire on this Roma here. That's good. Our Aegir's gonna try get the cross shots on this Roma, as you can see their shells coming in. Could be Rookbreak shells, actually, but... Looks like the Aegir's running to this Roma. You're gonna steal my damage, guys. Sadly, we couldn't finish the Kagero. We put him down to like 1k ish, 1.7. But is what it is. Sometimes we can't do everything, like to kill the destroyer, you know? I mean, we did damage him quite a fair amount. It's okay. He's not gonna like do much now, because he's so low, right? I would think. There he is. No, Enterprise! Don't come for my target, go for the Flanders! The Ned Flanders! Not my target, he's mine! <laughs> I can handle him! My shelf! <laughs> yeah, double permafire, let's go! He DCP'd my double fire earlier, so now I have double perma. But yeah, as you can see, fighting one battleship is significantly easier than fighting two at the same time. North Carolina is just a harder battleship to fight than Roma, to be honest, in a Cleveland, because he does overmatch your deck. But also, this Roma is missing quite a fair amount of shells. So it's not really just the overmatch that changed it, I would say. I'm pretty sure it has something to do also with individual aim, maybe. Maybe the North Carolina was superior there, in that department. Sadly, the Enterprise took my 100k damage, but that's okay. What can he do? Alright. Halo. Maybe we can secure our 100k, guys! Wow! 100k damage. Really cool. Fire? That's awesome. We got 10 fires this game. But to be honest... Um... Between this and IFHE on Cleveland, like, IFHE is not bad or anything. Like, especially if you fight ships like Flander, for example, you do pen them everywhere. But if you're fighting, like, North Carolinas and stuff, it really isn't really worth taking IFHE. Because you're still aiming superstructure most of the time. So, you could aim at the nose or something, but it's harder to hit, obviously, than the superstructure. So, obviously, IFHE is an option. Um, and obviously it can work well. I've tried both, um, but I think overall, like this one isn't a bad build, the one without IFHE on average. Because if you fight tier 7s and tier 6s, the fact that you don't have IFHE is actually really good. Because you're fighting, for example, New Mexico or Colorado, for example, you pen them everywhere. And without IFHE, and you set them on fire because you have a higher fire chance, right? So, but if you're a person, because this has happened like a lot on my stream, people just bring it up. If you're a person whose fire chance is just bad and you just think it's bad, I guess, I mean, if you're getting like zero fires anyway without IFHG, just put IFHG on anyway, right? Just get the extra penetration since you're not getting any fires, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it. So, in terms of this game, I mean, pretty average game, 109k. Like, it's not, it's nothing too crazy. Obviously, this series is meant to be live commentary. Of course, I'm live commentarying it, obviously. Um, so, we're gonna get games like this where they're not 200k or anything. But this gives you a true and fair view of what the ship actually is. 
and what I'm thinking at the time in a real situation instead of just showing you a highlight. Hey guys, look, this is my best game of the day. So I'm just showing you like, like literally I loaded in this morning, 9 a.m. on a Sunday, play Cleveland, and I'm just live commentating it. Like, you know, so that's kind of it with this series. It's like the fresh look. It's exactly like fresh look series, except it's with tech three ships. So like I said, um, it's not going to be, some of them are going to be decent games. But some of them are going to be normal, base, standard, average games like this one, um, of course. Um, and for you guys wondering, I mean, how could we have played it differently? I mean, I think holding the 10 line there wasn't really a bad option, especially because if we looked at our minimap the entire game, we really had decent control over the entire map. Like, all we had to do is hold the 10 line. We didn't have to force ourselves to push down or do anything on the 10 line. We were kind of just chilling and relaxing and just kiting and farming damage. It's kind of it, really. You don't have to, like, force yourself to make plays when you don't have to. You have to keep that in mind. But anyway, let's just take a look at the score. Probably since the game is probably over. Alright, so we ended up getting 109,000 damage. 330 shell hits. Assisted in cap. 2 in caps and 11 fires. And 2 spotted ribbons. Team score, we ended up getting 2nd place. We're gonna complement our Kansas. He got 2.4k base XP with no kills. That's really good, actually. He got a confederate. Um, in terms of our detailed report, of course, we damaged pretty much three ships. Actually, I mean, we did 12k to the Kagero, um, all his HP, basically. 23k on the Norcal and 59k to the Roma. And the damage taken, as you can see, is pretty distributed evenly between the Roma and the North Carolina. And then credits and XP. This is what we got, of course. I believe I do have a premium booster on Cleveland. So that is based on that um anyway so for my commander build again for those of you wondering it is last stand incoming fire alert priority target consumables enhancements demolition expert superintendent survivability expert concealment expert ad adrenaline rush you could of course take ifhe as i mentioned in the video and previously you could take that as an option concealment system mod one prop mod one aiming system mod one surveillance radar mod one and main armaments mod one for my modules and that's pretty much the Cleveland now what do I think of the Cleveland I think it's actually a pretty good ship at tier 8 uh, of course your main downside is the armor that you can pen it everywhere but as you saw last game we didn't really get citadeled we get penned yes for quite a lot of damage but we don't get citadeled most of the time you can get citadeled so please do play carefully in it and if possible do try to use islands more than I did last game it would help you out a lot and we just had to sit in the open to actually spot the things. That's why we were sitting in the open. But if you have a situation where someone's spotting for you, do sit behind islands. Because it's going to help you out a lot. But in terms of the Cleveland, I think it's a really good ship, of course. It's, of course, free. So there's no really downsides to get it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you enjoy this light cruiser playstyle, you're going to love the Cleveland to grind, of course, up to the Worcester. Um, it's honestly a really good ship. It used to be in tier 6 back in the day, but now it's, of course, a tier 8 since, like, 2017. But yeah, great ship for sure. Um, I would say I would recommend it, but I mean, I don't really need to because it's a tech tree. But it is a good ship, yes. It's a good ship. And it is slightly hard to play just because of that armor factor that it's not good armor. But it honestly is really fun. So that's pretty cool. And um, thank you for watching this tech trials video, guys, of course. And I'll see you in the next one. Please do let me know in the comments what ship you want to see next, okay? I, or any feedback about this type of series or whatever. Um, if you have any feedback or anything, please do leave it on the comments or on my Discord server. I do try to read every comment, even if I don't reply. I do try to read all of them. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Big fan.